Father and our God, we thank Thee for Thy precious Word. We thank Thee, Lord, that Thy Word brings light, brings life, and brings liberty. And Lord, we pray that through Thy Word tonight we'll not only hear Thy voice, but sinners will be drawn out after Thee in repentance and in saving faith. And I am trusting Thee for power, Thy power, Lord, it cannot fail, and this Word that Thou Thyself hast given to me shall, and it must, and it will prevail. Give us the prevailing Word, Lord, and we'll be careful to give Thee all of the praise and all of the glory, because it's through our Saviour's name we pray. Amen and amen. We're turning tonight, please, to the book of the prophet Joel, and we're in Joel tonight. If you, find, if you find the book of Ezekiel, after Ezekiel, it's Daniel, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, and then we come to the book of the prophet Joel. And we're in Joel chapter 3. Now, before I announce my text tonight, there's a great fact we need to get to grips with tonight a great fact we need to get to grips with. In fact, it's a fact tonight that needs to get a grip of us. A fact that needs to get a grip of us. Here's the fact. Life, death, and eternity go hand in hand. Life, death, eternity, they go hand in hand. How do they go hand in hand, George? I'll tell you how they go hand in hand. Each one is as real as the other. Friend, you know rightly tonight, life is real. Life is real. Man, we're experiencing life at this moment. That's what you're experiencing. That's what I'm experiencing. And we're all a living proof tonight that life is real. That can't be denied. Life is real. Ah, but let me tell you, friend, this evening, death is real. Never you ever forget that this evening. Death is as real as life. And every funeral you attend, every hearse you see, every coffin you see carry, proves to us tonight, death is real. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto man once to die. Life is real. Death is real. But let me tell you, friend, tonight, eternity is real. Eternity is real. I'll tell you something, first of all. Eternity is real for the saved. Doesn't end at death. Eternity is real for the saved. What did the Lord Jesus say? I go and prepare a place for you. That's the same. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you, that's the same, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I want to tell you tonight, eternity is as real as life for the saved. For the saved. Heaven's real. Heaven's real as this tabernacle. Heaven's as real as that pew you're sitting. Eternity is as real as life. Eternity is as real as death. Uh, real as death. But as sure as eternity is sure for the saved, eternity is sure for the unsaved. Eternity is as sure for the unsaved. The Lord Jesus, who gives us assurance that there's an eternity for the saved, gives us an assurance that there's an eternity for the unsaved. 
The Lord Jesus speaking concerning the unsaved. He's not talking about Catholics. He's not talking about uh, uh, murderers. He's not talking about heathen. He's talking about the unsaved. Those who turn their back on Christ. Listen to what he says. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. I'll tell you, friend, the thing. Heaven's real. Hell's real. Life's real. Death's real. Eternity is real. But here's the sobering question tonight. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you be 100 years from now? Ah, less than 100 years. And I'll tell you one thing, a hundred years you'll be someplace. You'll not be alive. You'll have died. You'll be in eternity. But eternity where? One thing is sure, friend, life is sure. One thing is sure, eternity is sure. And life and death and eternity go hand in hand, for one is as real as the other. And here's the wee title of my message this evening, God, God's message, not mine. Decisions determine your destiny. Decisions determines destiny. Decision will decide where you'll spend eternity. Now, I hope you've got Joel chapter 3 open, because I'm going to turn you to my text, and it's number verse 14. Joel chapter 3, verse 14. Here's the text. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. That's my text. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. We know that the Lord will bless that text to our hearts. The first thing in that text that stares you and stares me in the face, you'll find there a people of great number. Multitudes. Multitudes. He doesn't say it once. He says it twice. Multitudes. Multitudes. A people in great number. Multitudes abiding under the wrath of God. Multitudes facing the judgment of God. Multitudes. Multitudes. Multitudes without Christ. Multitudes. Multitudes without hope. Multitudes. Multitudes without God. Multitudes. Multitude, a people of great number. Let me tell you something about this people with great num of great number tonight. You see the multitude, this people in that tax tonight of great number. Listen, they're not all heathen. They're not all atheists. They're not all drunkards. They're not all murderers. They're not all adulterers. No, no, no. A people of great number in this text. I'll tell you, there's a lot of upright people here. There's a lot of churchy people here. Good people here. Religious people. But they're all in the same thing. They're all abiding under the judgment of God. And they're all tonight in the broad road that's leading to hell and to destruction. Let me tell you something tonight, friend. I hear a lot of men preaching, and they talk about the broad road. You've got the clean side, 
and you've got the dirty side of the broad road. Well, the, the, the clean side is the relig religious people, the good people, the charity workers. And then over on the broad on the north side, you've got the drunkards, you've got the murderers, you've got, you've got the heathen, you've got the atheists. Let me tell you, friend, tonight, you see the clean side of the road. It's as quicker to hell that road than the filthy, filthy side. And I can tell you now, friend, the people tonight who are on the clean side of the broad road will be damned in hell as quick as anybody. Because there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of life. There's people this evening in the kingdom of morn, flocking to their church, still going to hell, taking their communion, still going to hell, baptized as babies, still going to hell. The broad road, multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decision this evening. As we text Romans 3 and 9, it's stamped upon every person tonight in, in the valley of decision. All under sin. And I wonder tonight, dear unsaved friend, do you realize, do you recognize tonight that you face God's judgment? You're numbered among the multitudes tonight. The multitudes, high multitudes in the valley of decision. You know what the text says, don't you? The day of the Lord is near. The valley of decision. The day of the Lord is the judgment of God. The day of the Lord is the wrath of God. The day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. My dear unsaved friend tonight, there's another thing common here with this people of great number. Do you see these multitudes tonight? Multitudes! They're blinded by the God of this world. Do you know, friend, tonight, perhaps you're in this meeting and you're not saved? You realize that you cannot see your need? You cannot see your need of Christ. You cannot see your need of repentance. You cannot see the sin that you need to repent from. I'll tell you why that is, because you're blinded. You're blinded by the God of this world. Oh, friend, look at that text. Do you see a people there of great number? Multitudes, multitudes. And I see when I look down at the great multitude, and I see down a, a people of great number, I see people who don't care. I see people when I look into the people of great number in that text, when I look upon the multitude, multitudes it says, and when I look into the people of great number, I see people who are at ease. I see people who are careless. Do you know something? I see people who believe in God. I see people who have heard the gospel. I see people who know the need Christ. And there's many in the broad road tonight, and they've heard the gospel. And you're in the broad road. You've heard the gospel. You believe in God. You believe Christ died. You believe he rose again. But you're not saved. And I'll tell you, there's a people of great number this evening on the road to hell, marching as, far, as quick as the devil can bring them who's heard the gospel over and over again. Amy Carmichael had a dream one evening. She dreamed in her dream in a great valley. At the back of the valley there was a wall, and the wall was called Time. And at this side of the valley there was a big precipice, a big precipice where there was no bottom. She dreamed that in the precipice she could see the glowing of flames. Now she dreamed she could see that the wall of time was getting closer and getting closer. And in the multitude of that valley there was people who were at ease, who were singing hymns, 
who were quoting creeds, who were upright, who were charitable, who were religious. And then there was others who were drunkards. They had no time. They had no time for God, no time for their soul, no time for Christ. But the people who were religious was in the same valley. And the same wall of time brought them closer and closer to the precipice. And right at the very edge of the precipice, Amy Carmichael said, not one of them even cared until the moment they started to fall. And each person who went over the precipice screeched in terror as they fell. In her dream, she began to shout, Trust the Lord, trust the Lord, but none could hear. My dear friend, it would be an awful fate if you were to fall over the precipice, you may walk in and out of this tabernacle at ease, but I'll tell you, you'll screech the day you fall over the edge. Do you see that text in me? Are you among the multitude? Are you among tonight a people of great number? There's a pile of boys in that number tonight who are carrying false professions. There's a lot of boys in that valley this evening and they're carrying Bibles, but they're not saved. They're only an old false profession. They were never saved. And I'll tell you, friend, an old false profession is no good to you. Notice the text. A people of a great number, how true when Christ said, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Multitudes, multitudes. A people of great number. I want you to notice also in that text this evening, there's more than a people of great number. There's a place of great need. And you know where the place of great need is? In the valley of decision. The valley of decision tonight is where one's eternal fate hangs in the balance. The valley of decision. It's in this place of great need tonight where one has to choose. One has to decide. It's either Christ. Listen, there's a pile of people who knows about God, but they know nothing about Christ. Christ is the Savior of sinners. It's more about believing in God. It's more than believing in creeds and quoting all the rituals of the day. Friend, Christ is the Savior of sinners. Without Christ, you're going to hell. It was Christ that was crucified to the cross. It was Christ that bore our sins on His own body in the tree. It was Christ who suffered the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. It was Christ who suffered on that cross. It was Christ who died on that cross. Because there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. And God sent his only begotten Son into the world because there was no other, and I'll tell you this, friend, there is no other answer for sin. Only Christ is the sinner's answer. Only his precious blood is the sin's answer. And without Christ and without, if you're without Christ, you're without hope. And I'm telling you, God help the boys that stand in pulpit and water this down. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. I'll tell you, friend, Felix was in the valley of decision. You'll read where Felix trembled in the valley of decision. 
Let the boys tremble in meetings, you know. Under the great Holy Ghost of conviction of sin, ah, they trembled. But they went over the precipice like Felix. A lot of boys like Pilate, they were trapped in the valley of decision. How was he trapped, George? He was trapped between his conscience. And he was trapped between the crowd. Oh, Pilate knew what he had to do. He knew, he knew what he had to do, what he needed to do. Ah, but the crowd, the crowd was shouting, if you let this man go, you'll not be Caesar's friend. And there was many like Pilate in the valley of decision, trapped because of the crowd. And there's people, friend, like the dying thief who taunted in the valley of decision. If thou be Christ, the, the Son of God, save yourself and us. I'll tell you, there's even people who taunt Christ to the face. Even in their dying breath. I hope there's nobody mad enough to do that this evening. But bless God for the other thief. He didn't tremble in the valley of decision. He wasn't trapped in the valley of decision. He didn't taunt in the valley of decision. He trusted in the valley of decision. And that's what you need to do, love. And listen, sir, if you're going about with an old empty profession this evening, for goodness sake, get saved, man. Your false profession will put you into hell as quick as a bottle of drink would. Oh, friend, this evening, listen to me. Man, you need to decide tonight. Christ is the only way. He's the only one that can forgive sin. He's the only one that can save you from going to hell. He's the only one that can take you to heaven. Listen to me, friend. On this final night of this year, Christ is the only Savior of sinners. That's why I present Christ. I don't present the Baptists. I present Christ. And I preach Christ because He's the only Savior. And you sit up straight tonight before you leave this meeting and you decide where you're going to spend eternity. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision a people of great number, a place of great need. Finally, in that text, there's a pearl of great note. A pearl of of great note, because the day of the Lord is near. Where? In the valley of decision. You know where I am? I'll tell you where I'm not tonight. I'm not in the valley of decision. I came out of it 30 years ago. I came out of it 30 years ago. Judgment of God is not near me, but it's near you this evening. You've yet to decide. And God in all his love and God in all his mercy, I'll tell you, he's given you this very night to make that wise decision. Listen, sinner friend, tonight. Death and judgment draweth nigh to the arms of Jesus fly. in time. John Wesley's last sermon was preached from the text of Isaiah 55 and 6, his last sermon. And his last sermon Wesley preached was this, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Unsafe friend tonight, you're doomed. And if the truth be told, you could be almost down. But the good news of the gospel is tonight you can be delivered. And Christ is here to save you tonight. And he's here to give you eternal life. And he's here to give you his salvation tonight. Ah, but you must decide. I can't decide for you. You must decide. 
Colin Emerson was in with me the other day. He comes into my house for a cup of coffee. Told me a story of a man two months ago from Antrim, a millionaire perhaps four times over. He went to the doctor. He wasn't feeling one but well. And went to the doctor and he gave to the doctor. He told the doctor what his problem was. Doctor says, I'm going to send you in for a few tests and we'll get them and we'll see what the we'll see what the problem is. He went in to get a few tests done. And he's brought back in. And this man was told, You have six weeks. You have six weeks. Big strapping man, you wouldn't have thought there was anything wrong. Man from Antrim lived in a big house at Park Hall there outside Antrim. You can look overlooking Ballymena, overlooking Antrim. Oh, house to die for. He called the daughters home from Canada. He says, come home quick. And he got a photographer around. He wanted a family portrait done. He says, how soon could you get the portrait done? He says, we'll have it done for you in two days. He wanted framed, he says, and put up on the wall. Colin was at the funeral last Saturday. There the portrait was, and he says, you know something, it was, it was a week before he died. Time they got the daughters and all home, and you wouldn't have thought there was a thing wrong with him. And he just got the six weeks. And I'm telling you now, unsafe friend, you don't know what's going on inside that body of yours. You've made of six hours. And you're in the valley of decision, and I'm telling you now, the ju judgment of God is drawn very close. Listen to the arms of Jesus fly, please, please, tonight. Don't leave it any longer. Woe to the multitudes. Woe to the multitudes that are in the valley of decision. The day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. For goodness sake, will you come out of it? And trust Christ before judgment falls upon you. He waits with open arms. Let's pray tonight. Let's take these moments. Lord, tonight we just leave the eternal issues of this meeting with Thee. And we pray, Lord, tonight that Thou would come in all Thy risen power. Give deciding grace, we pray. And let none be careless. But Lord, may they throw the arms of faith around the lovely Savior who loves them and who died to save them and who longs for them to come. And we just commit the issues of this meeting to Thee. Pray, Lord, tonight for people to be wise, to consider their latter end. We long tonight that thou would visit in salvation blessing. O oh God, see some soul. We pray in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we take our leave, part us in thy fear and with thy blessing. We pray in our Savior's name. Amen. We're not singing any more hymns tonight. I want everybody to leave quietly, to leave prayerfully, because these are solemn moments. And if anybody wants to speak to me, please come and speak to me, please, because this is serious for you. God bless you.